let's move on to uh to those that need some remedial training guys yeah, crack um, my knuckles for this next group because i'm gonna yeah this is uh this is this is not a group you want to be a part of and guys not very often that we've seen the national runner up descend to absolute poverty the next season although i guess lsu did it in 2020 that was a COVID season weird things happen but tcu uh is a part of this group um that <laughs> for those on the youtube side these are not the overachievers these are these are those yeah, I, that flung the class see on the graphic there forgot to switch overachievers to failures maybe i should have put it in quotes it's all right you can start read, the... read it sarcastically read it well, like the yeah, exactly. Right? exactly for the youtube yeah. uh clip that's inevitably coming you can start it right here uh <laughs> tcu a great offense, top 25 offense. They had uh, 11th is what they finished in total offense, but 103rd in defense. They uh, ultimately finished five and seven. They have a really good recruiting class coming in this next season. So that's why they don't earn an outright F in this class. But Trey, to me, it felt kind of like, well, yeah, you, you had all the talent and then you just didn't study for the test. Like you showed up and you winged it and it, it just didn't work out. And and now you've got to you got to repeat third grade. Like we we got to we got to run it back. I'm actually a little bit higher on TCU's chances for this next season in the Big Twelve. But there's no doubt. Like you can't sugarcoat it. 2023 was as rude an awakening for TCU fans that thought that they were building all this momentum. It's what 2022 probably should have been for TCU, right? Like the magic clearly ran out. They lost a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball. People were looking at the offensive side of the ball, you know, losing, you know, uh, Max Duggan and uh, Quinshawn Judkin. Is no, that who uh, was? Johnson. Quentin Johnson. Johnson. Thank you. Quinshawn Johnson. Judkins is the running back. But, you know, losing guys like that. And no one was really looking at the defensive talent that they did, were losing. And it showed on the field, giving up in their FBS games, in, in their losses, excuse me, they gave up 45. 24, 27, 41, 35, and 29, and 69 points. Not nice um, on that last one, but <laughs> it, it was a defensive just, you know, it, I, I don't even know the word for it. It was putrid Catastrophe. on that side of the ball. And I don't know what the pulse of the fan base is on Coach Dykes, but I'm going to lump it in with another team we're going to talk about here in a second with Baylor and Coach Dave Aranda. It's my old mantra. One good year does not a good coach make. And so we, we got to talk. We, if we, he doesn't bounce back next year, we got to have a serious conversation about Dykes. Aranda's already on the hot seat. I think he's gone if they have another bad year this year, but you can't just, you know, have confidence in your coach off of one good year. You got to see more than that before you go crazy off the deep end for him. Well, well let's go, let's go into Baylor uh, because they were a team, you know, BYU and Arizona State, I don't know that we really had any true expectations for them last year, and, and they performed kind of as such. Uh, the offense for BYU did not save them. Uh, 121st in total offense. But, but Trey, take it to Baylor, and, and Garrett, I want you to weigh in on this as well. They thought Aranda was the guy after one really good season, and it looked great. It looked amazing when Dave Aranda came in and they had a plucky offense. And they got to the Big 12 championship game and they won it. And their defense stood on its head and helped them claim that championship. And since then, it's been a, a stock arrow pointing straight down. The recruiting has suffered. The offense has been virtually non-existent. You let your best playmaker, maybe in Kyron Jones, transfer out the door to Virginia Tech. I'm having a really hard time kind of finding any positives about the Bears program right now. Well, and the guy that you put, you know, all your eggs in his basket, Blake Shapin, is also heading out the door to Mississippi State, right? So it, I don't know, like, I, I haven't looked at their schedule for next year, but Baylor has a lot of the tools that you need to be a winning program. We've seen them with the right coach, and even with this coach, get a lot of positive results, but this year was as bad as it's been in, on the Brazos in a really, really long time. And it, it, it's hard to have a lot of optimism for me with the way that they're recruiting the way I know that we gave him a B for finishing 35th, but like 
I, I think when you combine that with their portal losses, when you look at a couple other teams yeah. in the state and what they're doing, what Tech's doing, what TCU's doing, what you know Utah and Arizona are doing on re- the recruiting front as well, I, that just doesn't really do, doesn't really it's not going to cut it. I don't think to win a Big Twelve championship. No, it, it certainly won't. And that's kind of the hard part is I think Aranda is a really good football mind. I think he really gets the game and is a good X's and O's coach, but his roster management has not been good to say the least. And just before, you know, we get called haters of the Baylor program, you know, I'll, you know, put my hand up. My wife's a Baylor grad. I got no ill will towards the bears, but like, man, it's just, it's almost impossible to turn on their games because they're just awful to watch. Like they're really not fun to watch. And, And, you know, they don't score a lot of points. There's nothing particularly dynamic about their offense everything that was dynamic about their offense is gone. Um, And so you're really hoping there's some fresh blood in there. Maybe, you know, a second transfer portal window can help them and, you know, maybe they can nail that, but there's nothing that we've seen so far that says that'll be the case. Uh, So they got to get some stuff turned around quick because the other half of this is, and, and this is something that's maybe a little bit more behind the scenes for Baylor, but there's a lot of excitement in other places on that campus. Their basketball team has been really good for the last several years. They're going to continue to be a, a, a dominant force. They just, you know, open up a new arena. It's a little bit smaller, but it's, you know, real nice. And so there's a lot of focus on other places on their campus right now. And it's already kind of a small fan base, small alumni base. It's a private school, right? It's a little bit smaller. Um, and so when you, when you think about where Baylor goes from here, kind of what they're looking to do, they really need to find some way to turn this thing around and quick uh, to get this, this fan base excited because without the fan base being excited, there's not going to be buy-in. You're not going to be able to win on the NIL front, which means you're not going to win in the transfer portal. And if you're not winning in the transfer portal, I don't think you're winning on the football field either. But to your point, there's just no juice in the fan base twice. Yeah. Two, two home games towards the end of the season, I drove by uh, McLean on my way back from calling high school football, and both times at the half, Baylor's, it's like school's letting out. Everyone's yeah. headed to the parking lot. Everyone's going home at the break nobody's even staying for the, the the third quarter, right? Uh, it's it's a fan base that just has no faith, no juice. There's not much excitement. The defense was putrid this last season, at least under Aranda. What you've been able to hang your hat on is a great defense, right? Even if the offense maybe needs some work is sluggish. They were 113th in the country in total defense. That is just not going to get it done, even in a conference that doesn't play a lot of defense historically. Uh, that is so not what Dave Aranda is supposed to be bringing, what Baylor football typically has been about. Um, and so I'm very, very concerned about the Baylor Bears. Um, any other closing thoughts here on uh, on those teams that had a rough 2023 before we get out of here? Who do you guys think is more likely to take a step forward next year, Houston or BYU? Ooh. Uh, Houston. Houston. Plead the fifth. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say Houston. I, I think I agree with that, but man, I just don't know. Neither of them give you really a lot of reason for optimism, right? I mean, there's not a lot I'm looking at saying like, oh, these teams are going to you know, really take a step forward because of this. Like, I just, I don't, I don't really like where either of the programs are right now. I literally it's, forgot Houston was a power five program at one point last year. <laughs> Trey called me out on, the, on our betting segment because I grouped them in with a group of five parlay. Yeah, I mean, I think long term, Houston is Houston's better set up from a program standpoint. It seems like to have success than BYU. Maybe they're just closer mm-hmm. to talent. Maybe getting a right coach that can invigorate that fan base a little bit. You talk about other programs that have maybe have more distractions from their basketball team, and that's where the money's flowing right now. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think long term, it seems like Houston might be better set up, but. I don't know. Like, I, I still like what BYU has a really good culture. And I, you look mm-hmm. at their, you know, getting an F in offense and an F in defense on our show doc, 121st in offense, 109th in defense. And they still found a way to win five games and be competitive in their losses. Like that, that's good culture, even if you're not actually getting the results on the field. Well, and one more note on BYU is with this new conference realignment, we're getting BYU Utah in the same conference now. Yep. And that's something to be excited about. This is a game I would like to see played every year at the end of the year and watch a rivalry game in a in a cold Utah environment type of thing. That'd be a lot of fun. That's Absolutely. the holy war, isn't it? Utah, BYU. Yes, so. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. You need to see that. Uh, need to see that with some regularity. Gracious, yeah, power! 